Hello, it's the last time I did an unboxing from the new Xiaomi NIF 54L15 board. Uh, today I uh, want to show you a little bit more. So last time we had just uh, used the Blinky example and flash it on the board. Let's see how we can program our own LED or GPIO output and how we print something out and how we using blocking. The first thing is I solder, of course, on the board already the pins. And you remember the new case which they sell with the uh, new board. And the advantage is also it's two sides here. And there is a side which is going a little bit deeper inside. And still with the pins, the board is fitting here. Yeah, so you can still later store it quite nice. Um, the last time we used the toolchain 3.02, I had a slight problems with this toolchain, and there is a new toolchain, an SDK already out, the so 3.1. So I recommend directly um, install the toolchain. Yeah, just go and install toolchain, use a new one. Uh, best even you delete the old one and also the SDK that we are working with the 3.1 version. And in the first step, we have then to copy our uh, Blinky example, just making a copy from it and rename it. I rename it GPIO branch. And inside, delete the build folder uh, since we have to create a new one. You have now two possibilities. Actually, you can add here directly um, existing applications, and you're having here two applications. Sometimes, especially for beginner, when they are not taking care, it can be quite confusing because when you have the wrong application activated, then uh, you open the wrong file and the build is with the uh, wrong one or the flashing. So, and even with the board package I had with the toolchain version 3.02 uh, problem because it found two board packages. Um, I think they changed with the new version, but I still recommend for the most just close the uh, uh, workspace and uh, make a new one. Yeah, uh, I remove this from the workspace and add the new folder and use the GPIO print. And for faster changing later the workspaces, you can also store the workspace here, save workspace as and uh, start in the Blinky, f uh, not in the Blinky folder, in the GPIO print folder. And then the next time you can easily open this workspace. Now we have also to make a build. So we go and add build configuration, do it down or up here. And Generate. You're seeing that the right GRO board is already selected. Generate and build. When the build is finished, then we can directly look at the source file here at the main C. I mean, this is still from the Blinky example, but when you're going here a little bit deeper, you see already that is the print F statement is here. So we should actually see something as output. So I plug first in the module. Yeah, and my module, um, you see it in the device manager actually, uh, is on port 10, on COM port 10 here. And you just need a serial editor for seeing the output. Um, so I um, flash this here first. 
Mm. Terminal. A few window. Terminal. So first I flash it again. So I make a NRF connect and I make a West flash. Such uh, for sure the blinky example is on the board. And here you have also the advantage you can make an NIF serial terminal. So you just click here and you use the COM10. And then you see you have directly an output here. Yeah. So the print statement working quite well. Without you have to, to change something. Now we want to control a GPIO port. So I'm using this uh, GPIO port 1 and the pin 7, which is here on the GRO board. And I connect there an LED. The LED is here connected on the board, on the uh, pin here with a resistor. I use here a 200 ohm resistor and a red 5 millimeter LED and connect it then to the ground. And of course, when we're having the blinky source code, we can just go on the overlay file and add here um, another LED node. Uh, here, LEDs, we make it um, compatible with GPIO LEDs, and I call it LED1 with the label LED1 and the node. Um, LED underscore underline one and this is GPIO port one and pin seven with active high. And then I can here in the source code, I'll save it here, can directly go here and add another macro of where I'm using the LED one node instead of the LED zero. And uh, I use here the macro node label, not the alias, and using here one. And then I can just exchange here and setting the LED one. Now, of course, I have to compile this. And we flash this to the board. And now you're seeing our user LED is lightning. Of course, this is uh, nice when you're making a fixed LED on it, but we wanted to control actually the GPIO port. When you program the first time with Safia, of course, the source code from the blinking can be a little bit overwhelming, especially with the macros from the device tree, from the hardware specification. So we start from the beginning because we want to control the GPIO port directly. And maybe we want to control later something different like an LED. So uh, let's see how to make it. So we clean this first up a little bit. Uh, I delete a few things and let just the basic things here. So the return value I'll let here inside. And the while loop, I only let the sleep statement inside. So it's quite empty source code. And the first thing what we have to do, we need the um, node label from the GPIO port. So I define macro with uh, the name GPIO one node label, and I get the node label, it's the internal structure here is, uh, from the macro DT node label and with the name GPIO one. Where this label is stored, I will show you later. And in the next step, I have to define device. So it's the structure device, uh, I call it GPIO1, and I use as a macro device dt get, 
And then some important um, information is stored in the device type from the TPIO1 node label. Uh, you should always control here an error. If the device is not ready, then return an error. And in the next step, I have to configure the TPIO pin 7 as output. So I using here TPIO pin configure, configure TPIO 1 with pin 7 and I set it as um, active output. This means it's um, high when, uh, when it's active and low when it's not active. And then I can directly control the, the pin in the while loop. and um, make this with GPIO pin toggle and just giving here the GPIO 1 and the pin 7. And then I can directly compile this. And then transfer it with West flash again on the GRO dongle. And like you see now the LED is also Linking. When the build is finished, you find the build structure in um, when you're going here on Explorer under build and you going here under TPIO print and save here, you find the device tree which is built under safehere.dts. Yeah, here standing all uh, hardware which is defined in the device tree. And we find here then also the GPIO one when we're searching for it. Yeah? Um, here is the definition of it. And here you're seeing the label which I uh, used for getting the information. And you see here the path. Yeah? So it's structured uh, hierarchical. And you're seeing here SOC, peripheral, and then here number and then slash. GPIO and so on. This is a whole path. This cannot be stored in a macro, which is why uh, Safia using a little bit of trick. So what is stored is then DT for device tree, underline, and then uh, N, and then underline S for slash, and then underline SOC, underline S for slash, and so on. And I can even print this out I have here a macro which I use to show this for you that you understand a little bit how this is working. So I define here the macro and I make here a show define TPRO label. and build this. And when I flash this now on the board and make here an output in serial terminal, of course I have to reset it. You see here is a node label, yeah, GPR node labels. This was the name from the macro where I store it. And you're seeing here dt slash uh, under, underline n underline s for the slash underline soc underline s underline peripheral and the number and so on. It's the same uh, path which we saw, saw there before. When you uh, select the build here, you can also go here in the device to visual editor. Yeah? You find there what we saw in the file already in the CFIA device tree file. You're seeing here the nodes, and we find here in the SOC, yeah, global peripherals, there is the GPIO one port, yeah, also the name, and so on, which we uh, saw before. So now let's activate the logging. For this, first we have to uh, add something in the project configuration. Yeah? 
you see here is that the GPIO port is configured, but for the logging, we have to add a few things actually. The first thing is that we have to uh, activate the logging. Since the default logging, there are three uh, logging types actually. Um, it's one for uh, um, warning, one for info, uh, which one is first? Uh, error is the first, warning, then for info is to level three, and for debug is to level four. And now we let print out everything to level three. Then we configure the con uh, console, set uh, its UART console, that we're using the USB device stack. And um, since um, it's using here the USB CDC uh, AC, we have to also activate this. And the back end is the UART for the locking. Yeah? So you have to add this in the uh, project conf and then in the main we can directly use the logging after we include the header file so i just include this and for every file that we are using of course we have to uh, register the log module yeah now I use it here, my app. Uh, this parameter is uh, optional. You can use it when you want to have another log level. This would be now log level four. So we will get all information. When we let it away, then it's used the one from the project conf. Yeah? And how to use it is actually quite simple. It depends on the uh, message you want to make. Yeah, you have here just the information, for example. Um, then it's just like a printout. Uh, uh, when you're having an error, you can say, oh, something went wrong. Then you're using log L. And um, the other one is for debug. And one, for example, yeah. I place here now in the while loop the warning, for example, just like a heartbeat. And then I make the other print away so that we don't have too many messages. And then I compile it, I build it new. When the build is then finished, I just flash it on the board. And I open again the serial. And you're seeing here my heartbeat. And when I reset it again, you're seeing also here, hello from Sephir, the error, which is red. And um, you can easily activate and deactivate the, or changing the log level and also deactivate later the messages, which is much more comfortable than uh, you have to remove the print statements, for example. Yeah. So I recommend mostly to using the logging statements yeah, for print out something like uh, log in um, and for the errors and the log error. So I think this is enough information for one video. Uh, you saw how you can control the GPIO port and how uh, you can print out something and uh, see it in the terminal. And also how you can use the logging. These are the basics for the start of programming. Uh, uh, so see you in the next video.